Okay, you're looking live at East Land Bowl and the finals of the seventh annual Erie Amateur Memorial Tournament. We had a record 162 entries this year, and we're down to the final four. Warming up right in front of you. Well, first of all, let me introduce my broadcast partner. Here he is, a Times News finalist, uh, super dad, and uh, my pal, Chris Moffat. Chris, good to have you along. Thanks for having me, Steve. Glad to be here. All right, terrific. We got, uh, you're looking at S Scott Hoover and Chris Fanzini will start us off. This should be an interesting match here. Both guys love to play the deep inside line. Both are very talented at doing so. Uh, if I were to give an upper hand here, I'd say I'm going to go with Chris Franzini coming off a, a great match against uh, Chad Hickey there in the semi semifinal brackets to get to the finals here. All right. All right, first up on LA 9, Chris Fanzini. Chris is going to start the match here up on the left lane. A little bit outside, seven count. See if we can spare this up. We started the day, Chris, with the PBA Dick Weber Cup 2007 lane condition that I found on the Kegel Library. Uh, it was a five to one pattern. It was supposed to be a little more challenging than a league shot, but uh, open to multiple angles and uh, you know, giving all styles a chance to get to the pocket. Obviously, lanes have dried up now, but it looks like the lanes are holding up. But as you said, yep, it's gonna it's forcing everybody deep inside. So we'll see how they play on this. Yeah, it started a little challenging today, but as they break them down here, the guys that play the deep inside line look to have the better look here. Yep, I'll have to agree with that. A good spare by Chris. That'll bring up Scott Hoover on lane 10. Scott's dad's walking around uh, the building saying how proud he is and saying this is the furthest Scott's ever gotten in a scratch tournament. So kind of proud of him and happy to see him do this well today. Yeah, that's a good feeling. As you would know, Chris. <laughs> Tug that one a little bit. A little baby split. We'll see if he can convert. Make it an all-even match. Chris, what do you do when the lanes are starting to hook like this and you know you probably aren't going to be light? you got to keep the – is it just all speed on the ball? What do you What do you like to focus on? Do you look down the um, lane? Do you just try to take some hand out of it? What's your strategy when the lanes get this tough? It just tough? depends on – on the situation. Most of the time I like to get in real deep and just soften up my hand uh -huh. and uh, try not to do too much to the ball. Let the, the back end part of that lane uh, take care of it. If the fronts are real bad, try to loft over that, which you see a lot of those guys on the PBA Tour do. I hear you. It's Hoover just missed. That's a tough spare today with how dry the lanes are. That's going to be tough. Spare shooting, as always, uh, in the tournament here, the cut was, uh, I believe... To make the top 24 was a score of 600, I believe, right? We took the top 32. I'll have to double check on the stats. But, yeah, uh, how many folks said they just missed because they're spare shooting. So all you yes. viewers out there and tournament bowlers, it's you got to get your strikes, but darn it, get your spare game in order Spares too. Spares on a shot like this are <laughs> premium. Okay, Scott Hoover, left lane. Goes uh, through great. the face again, carries the strike. Trip the four. I like what Scott's doing there. My One of my little tricks that I used to do, Chris, when I pulled up the right side was when the lanes got this, the one I was taught growing up, yeah, the loft. Get some loft on it. You know, I know right. the trend nowadays is for a little less hand. What we grew up with and what we talked about was the lofting. So Scott looked like he got a little extra loft on that ball. See if that's if he'll continue. Okay, Chris Vanzini working on a spare on the right lane. Maybe Alley 10's hooking a bit. Looked good, but it just checked yeah. up a little bit. Left himself the 3 6 spare. No gimme on, no gimme at this point, right? No gimme's right here. A little You're bit of right pressure, Steve. tougher lane conditions. And I bet you've chopped the 3 6 at least once in your life. I'm sure <laughs> I've done that as well. Probably at least once this week. <laughs> Probably. Okay. Spares it up. And we got Fanzini up by 10. 
Now an adjustment on that, he might just want to move a couple boards to the left with his feet, maybe inside with his target a little bit, or just be a little bit more firm with it. I hear you, Chris, and right, and with our two guys, like we mentioned the same about Scott Hoover, Chris Vanzini again, not a lot of experience bowling in the finals of scratch tournaments. You know, will he figure out? Does he know to move left enough? Does, will, will, it'll be interesting to see if he can make the adjustment. Well, with a little bit more loft there and high hit, strike. Yeah. Looks to be about the right adjustments there just to get it through the front part of the lane a little bit better so it's not picking up right away. Went through the pins the right way and snaps out the 10. Great shot by Chris. Okay, Scott Hoover can tie the match up with a strike here on the right lane. Flush strike right there by Scott. Scott likes to use the two-finger approach where he really puts his hand underneath it, cups it, and really rips through it. Back before these two-handers showed up here and have come to really take the, the bowling world over here with <laughs> Oscu and and uh, Jason Belmonte, yep. the two-handed... Uh, or the, the two-finger approach was, was really the, the revolutionary style where they could really crank up the lane. Mike Miller was excellent at that, but Mike was also good at putting his whole hand in the ball, and he's won tournaments both ways. Scott comes in a little bit light over there on the left lane and breaks up the... Great job. Thanks, Steve. Josh Kalaszewski, one of our finalists, just walking by. Chris, I think people were happy with the lane condition today. I think they were happy with that it was a little more challenging than right. the league yeah. shot. And, I mean, there were a few little little bit of grumbling here and there, shot the guys weren't used to. But I uh, overall, I'm thinking the guys appreciated this bit of a challenge I had today. Yes, uh, the score seemed to be fair across the whole entire field. We had a few guys bowl lights out, run away with it. But for the most part, scores were about the same. As Chris goes through the nose again, leaves the 3-10. So it looks early on, pal. The right lane might be giving guys a little bit of trouble. That could be a key as the day goes well, on. Well, he didn't. It didn't look did like he lofted it out as far as he did on nine. Okay. So, um, yeah. Again, he might want to just move in a little bit deeper and give that ball a little bit more loft to get it through the heads there. Do you think Chris has the strength to do that? Looking Absolutely, at it? he does. Okay, Looking at so his too. physical, <laughs> his physical appearance there, he is more than capable of, of lofting that ball. Nice pick up there. Good job, Chris. Chris stays clean. I can tell you, it's, it's funny how we've all been there where you, I'm, maybe I'll bowl today, maybe I'm a little sick, maybe I'll go. You know, and Chris, actually, when he signed up for the tournament, he signed up with a maybe he'll come. So isn't that fun how it works out? You know, it definitely he wasn't even worked sure out if he was him, coming, and now here he is, and I'm sure he's glad he came. Okay, here's Chris Fanzini uh, working on a spare, the left lane. There's that loft we were talking about. It still checks up on him and leaves mm. the 2-8. I'm sorry, the 3-9. I don't see another ball down there this for might. Chris Chris, so this might be... No, it looks like he uses one ball to shoot his strikes and his spares. And no, he yep, actually yep. is going to change. Oh, okay. Probably something a little bit harder shell. Yeah. This may be a little difficult as the lanes are checking up. Mm -hmm. And if you get it too far to the right, there's a big hang spot out there that it might not recover from. So this should be interesting. Oh, great spare, Chris. All right. Now Scott Hoover up on the right lane with three in a row. Now this is the time you want to strike. This is a chance. Hoover's got a chance to and put some And if he distance. strikes here, Steve, yes. that would be four strikes in a row. And uh, uh -oh. if you tune into ESPN when our old buddy was on there, uh -huh. he called four in a row a what? Let's see if we can call it. Oh. Thank you, sir. May I have another? Yes, that was uh, that's a hard one there. It was a great shot. Seven pin. And this is where the inexperienced guys have to not get upset. We've it was got a to big stay. shot. You know, it didn't go. It wasn't a strike. But you know what? You're lined up. Stay with the positives. Make your spare. You're right. And you got a 12-pin lead. You stay within yourself and stay clean. And 
the outcome should be good. You can hear that ball actually roll over the thumb hole. Yep, which which it is not kills a bad it a little thing. Bit. No, which no, is right. On, on, on the drier spares, lane conditions, can, that's going to calm down the back You used to hear Walter Ray's ball do that when you, I was a kid watching on TV. You are correct, he sir. He would shoot across lane at his 10 pins. You could hear that ball roll right over the thumb hole. All right, we got Scott Hoover up on the alley nine with a 12-pin lead now in the sixth frame, working on a spare. Ball actually rolling over the thumb hole on his first ball. That's something that you definitely don't want to do there. The ball flaring Boy, Chris, right it looks, over that. It looks like right now both the guys are going to have to make an adjustment. Right. They're either going to have well, to do what you said, either soften up. I think you can still move deeper inside. Now, do the right. guys, are they going to do that? Do they know to do that? You know, are they comfortable enough? You know, I used to have a lot of people said, you know, I like to play fourth there. I don't like to get deeper than that. You know, they, so the guys, we'll see, but that's where... Well, you that know, just comes down you to experience. Gotta make, oh, yeah, you got to The guys that bowl in the tournaments, they bowl on the harder shots. They know what the moves are. They know what they need exactly. to do. As Scott makes the spare there on the left lane. You know, experience gets you through There's to that key, point. Right. You know, what, what to do, what ball, you know, where to move on the lane. And, again, the person that, that makes those moves, that calculates that out, is going to have the upper hand in the match here. Absolutely. Now, it looked like Chris did make a move to the left. Yeah, it looks like he moved in Up a few right with his feet there. Yep, yep, and there we go. See if he gets that loft out on the lane. Oh, it still checks up, but he gets the good break, trips the four there. A veteran move by the newcomer. Well, Manzini, hopefully he Chris. needs to move a little bit more. Mm -hmm. A little bit more there, and I think he'll be lined up. Chris, okay, we got Chris Fanzini up on the left lane. Uh, strike working, a strike here to tie the match. Fanzini with the strike. Big double by Chris. Yeah, that's that's huge. Draws a smile, <laughs> as it should. <laughs> All right, what's Hoover gonna do on the right lane, Chris? He's been high. He was high last time over here. It looked like he made a little jump to the left. Scotty breaks up the split, just leaves a six pin. If he makes this, he'll be only uh, one pin down. The spare here will be down by 10. 10? Oh, okay. I'll get you right Shooting across lane, it's down early, and ooh, it hangs on. Had it all the way. <laughs> Put those skinny jeans on there to make that six pin. You know, Chris, uh, for the history of the tournament here, uh, interestingly enough, uh, each person who's won our previous uh, six champions, this was always their first ever tournament victory in a scratch tournament, and the same is going to hold true today. Hoover gets it down, high flush, throws a strike there. So we still have That's a, a confidence match builder, here. right? The strike on the lane you're going to finish on in the eighth. That's right. So he's got to remember that, put that in the memory bank, and throw it the same way over there next time. Okay, we got Fanzini. He can strike here, puts him at strike here, puts 126 him on. in yep. the sixth, sixth frame. frame. Put him up by 20. No, up by 10. See, this not keeping score. You get a little rusty, right? 
right? All this automatic <laughs> scoring and everything. Yeah, I remember it makes us lazy. A kid growing up and filling the frames out. Chris sticks a little bit on his first shot, leaves a four pin. Good shot, just didn't get the break there. Last time I believe he tripped the four pin. Not so fortunate this time. Chris with a spare here, we got ourselves a tie match. Going into the ninth frame. Given the fans, still a close something to root yeah, for. Yeah, what they came for. A nice close yeah. match. See if Chris can pick this up here. Shoots across lane. No problem with the four pin. One thing you're not hearing today is anybody yelling hook. Hook. Right? I, think right. that's, I don't think you'll hear that for the rest of the day. No, no. <laughs> definitely no problem. We know we hear it leak sometimes. You, uh, you know, yeah, yeah, a little bit late on the spares, but yeah, we're not gonna, I don't think we're going to hear that today. If anything, if anything we're going to hear a little push or a little right, hold. Right, absolutely. <laughs> and I believe that's why our tournament leader, Dave Dias, has an advantage with everybody. It's just the soft speed that he has and with that soft, soft hand. hand is, exactly. He lets that ball change direction on its own. He doesn't really give, give too much into it. Through the nose there, leaves a six pin. Which gives Scott a chance to get up there and double and take the lead in the match. And close it out. He can actually shut him out, yes. Okay, with a strike here, Chris Van, or with a spare here, Chris will have a possible 214. Nice pickup by no Chris. No problem on the spare. Now let's see what Scott's made of here. He has a chance to close this out. This is no the key frame right here, yet. the foundation no frame. No strikes the last few shots. Only one strike on this lane, Chris. When you needed a strike like this, I said keep the speed up, right? Keep your mark, keep your eye on your mark. Follow through hard, keep your speed up. Let's see what the young man's got. Looks good, Steve. High flush hit there. Great Best shot of the match right there. Good sportsmanship there between the two. A strike here wins it for Hoover. This has been the better lane of the two for Scott. Nine spare strike. Little wide there. Oh, Ooh, three count. That's something you don't see. Boy, the but you know that's, 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 that stays true to what the what the lanes played like today. Yep. If you got it out there, there there wasn't free hook from the side. You really had to make good shots, come off your hand clean, and, and but stay aggressive at the same time. All right, Scotty, regroup. So this just Remember makes everything that much more interesting here. Exactly. Well, that just tightened things up right there. Great. Okay, he's got to regroup. Just for your strike ball, buddy. Bring it in, and you still got a chance to win the match. Goes on the Brooklyn side there, spares it up, which will give him 188 Chris, in the ninth that was frame. A big spare. <laughs> that was. Not a spare. You get a lot of practice shooting. <laughs> strike here will give him 208. And Chris can actually get up and strike out for 214. Yep, count here doesn't mean too much. It's going to count. Fanzini's going to need a double on lane 10 to win the right, match. Right, in the last two times he's gone high and he's flirted with that four pin. Left it the last time, tripped at the time before that. Scott recovers. Good shot, leaves a 10. He'll finish with 207. 207. Now Chris is up on the right lane here. Situation's this, Chris. Double by Fanzini. He's moving on to the next round. What do you think's going through his head right now, Steve? I'm hoping he's thinking, keep the speed up. Right. Speed, speed is definitely One key. One time. I like to give myself a little self-talk, Chris. Say, come on, Banks, you can do it. So I'm hopefully he's telling himself, come on, Chris, you can do it. Make a good shot. Let's see how he does. It's off his hand. Goes through. Hoover will survive. Oh. Scott
Scott will move on and face our number three, or I'm sorry, our number two seed, Jeff Prue. Good game by both bowlers, Chris. It looks like uh, we'll see if that holds true for the next couple matches. Their right lane seemed to give each guy a bit of a trouble. Right. So we'll see if anybody can conquer the well, right lane in the next match. can get up there and actually take command of the match. The first person to put that pressure on. Chris is going to finish out here. Finish out. It'll still be a good week for him. Goes high again. And he oh. trips it out. Ah, well, when he Way to end the day there. there. So. All right. There we go. Finishes Great with a respectable Scott 203. Hoover wins 207 to 203 and moves on to meet Jeff Prue. And we'll be right back with that match after these messages. <laughs> 